it can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I It can be but my gratitude I earn. Well, I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks. And thank you so much for coming to join me today in studying A Course in Miracles. We're reading from uh, the Foundation for Inner Peace version, 2007 public printing of uh, the workbook, Lesson 197, here on Monday, uh, July the 15th of 2024. It can be but my gratitude I earn. And I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, sitting on here on the banks of Lost Creek, right outside of Racine, Missouri. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Here is the second step we take to free your mind from the belief an outside force pitted against your own. You make attempts at kindness and forgiveness, yet you turn them to attack again. Unless you find external gratitude and lavish thanks. So we don't want to turn our forgivenesses and our uh, uh, kindnesses back into attacks. So we got to find reasons to give thanks. Lots of it. As he called it, external gratitude and lavish thanks. See things to thank God for all around you. Your gifts must be received with honor, lest they be withdrawn. And so you think God's gifts are loans at best, at worst, deceptions which would cheat you of defenses to ensure that when he strikes, he will not fail to kill. How easily are God and guilt confused by those who know not what their thoughts can do. How easily are God and guilt confused by those who know not what their thoughts can do. Deny your strength and weakness must become salvation to you. See yourself as bound and bars become your home. Nor will you leave the prison house or claim your strength until guilt and salvation are not seen as one and freedom and salvation are perceived as joined with strength beside them to be sought and claimed and found and fully recognized. The world must thank you when you offer it release from your illusions. Yet your thanks belong to you as well, for its release can only mirror yours. Your gratitude is all your gifts require, that they be a lasting offering of a thankful heart. Your gratitude is all your gifts require, that they may be a lasting offering of a thankful heart released from hell forever. <laughs> Is it this you would undo by taking back your gifts because they are not honored? It is you who honor them and give them fitting thanks, for it is you who have received the gifts. It does not matter if another thinks your gifts unworthy. In his mind, there is a part that joins with yours in thanking you. Catch that. It does not matter if another thinks your gifts unworthy. In his mind, there is a part that joins with yours in thanking him. That's that Christ part in everyone. Whether they see that you're blessing them or not. Whether they realize that you're thanking them or not. It does not matter if another thinks your gifts unworthy. In his mind, there is a part that joins with yours in thanking you. It does not matter if your gifts seem lost and ineffectual. They are received where they are given. In your gratitude, are they accepted universally and thankfully acknowledged by the heart of God himself? And would you take them back? when he has gratefully accepted them? God blesses every gift you give to him, and every gift is given him. 
because it can be given only to yourself. God blesses every gift you give to Him, and every gift is given Him because it can be given only to yourself, and what belongs to God must be His own. Yet you will never realize His gifts are sure, eternal, changeless, limitless, forever giving out, extending love and adding to your never-ending joy while you forgive but to attack again. Withdraw the gifts you give and you will think that what is given you has been withdrawn. But learn to let forgiveness take away the sins you think you see outside yourself and you can never think the gifts of God are lent but for a little while before he snatches them away again in death for death will have no meaning for you then. <laughs> and with the end of this belief, when the, with the end of belief in death, is fear forever over. Thank yourself for this, for he is grateful only unto God, and he gives thanks for you unto himself. To everyone who lives will Christ yet come, for everyone must live and move in him. His being in His Father is secure because their will is one. Their gratitude to all they have created has no end, for gratitude remains a part of love. So when you're practicing loving your neighbor as yourself, be sure to use thankfulness. Be sure to lavish thanks. Look for things to thank your brothers and sisters for. Because in thanking them, you're thanking God. Thanks be to you, the Holy Son of God. For as you were created, you contain all things within yourself. And you are still as God created you. Nor can you dim the light of your perfection. In your heart of God, in your heart, the heart of God is laid. He holds you dear because you are himself. All gratitude belongs to you because of what you are. Give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. Can we do that? Even those that tend to get under our skins or, or seem to say things that, that are a, 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 a challenge for us? Give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. And from this self is no one left outside. Everyone's in this circle of atonement that can help heal us and to know ourself. Give thanks for all the countless channels which extend this self. All that you do is given unto him and all that you think can only be his thoughts, sharing with him the holy thoughts of God. Earn now the gratitude you have denied yourself when you forgot the function God has given you. But never think that he has ever ceased to offer thanks to you. Isn't that nice to know? God has never ceased to offer thanks to us. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Okay, well let's go take a look in our text reading. And uh, let's see, we are ready for, um, well, we're in chapter 21, Reason and Perception, and the Responsibility for Sight, and we're going to pick up in paragraph 8. It's, we, we read paragraph 8 yesterday. While you're turning there, let's see what's going on around the world today. Uh, out of Holidays and Observances and Drexel University's Religious Calendar, St. Smithen's Day, and St. Smithen was the Bishop of Winchester Cathedral uh, from, 18, from 852 to 862. Be a door today. Yes, yesterday was Embrace Your Geekness Day. Today is Be a Dork Day. <laughs> Global Hug Your Kid Day. Well, special day to hug your kid. Probably a good day to hug your kid, but that probably ought to be every day. I Love Horses Day. Uh, your Equus Cabalus. The horse 
get out of the doghouse day. <laughs> if you're in the doghouse, it's definitely a good day to get out of the doghouse, huh? Give something away day. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaking together, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure you give, it shall be measured to you again. And that's somewhere out of Luke. Uh, I can't remember the passage. Anyway, give something away day. You can't outgive God. Give everything you can, then give a little more. Pot, fire, uh, pet fire safety day. Respect Canada day. Tapioca pudding day. The cassava plant. The Manahot Escalanta. It grows in zones uh, 8 through 12, so it's definitely a tropical. Uh, World Youth Skills Day, and I'd encourage you to get your kids out into nature and teach them how to build a fire with um, with with either you know stick, bow drill, uh, flint. You know, just there's lots of different ways you can get a fire going out in out in the uh, wild. Maybe start with a magnifying glass and piece of uh, bird nest or, or something. Uh, but anyway, lots of different ways. Teach kids how to build a fire, how to stay warm, how to find food out in the, out in the wild. Uh, and then out of edible landscaping, we've got the Thai lime, which is the Cyrus Histria. And it says of the Thai lime, popular in Thai and Cambodian cooking, the fresh and dried leaves impart a pleasant citrus flavor when added to soups and curries. The fruit rind is candied and dried and used in curry paste. The fruits are eaten fresh or made into drinks. Zones 9 through 10. Okay, that's your Thai lime. Thank you, Edible Landscaping, for that. It can be but my gratitude I earn. When you're, when you're giving thanks to anyone, you're giving thanks to yourself. Remember, we're all related. We're all connected. Matakwiasen, a whole Matakwiasen. All my, all my relations, we're all one, we're all together. Seems like our Western thought has kind of lost that, that connected real, realization that the most native people know naturally. So, but we're regaining it with Course in Miracles. Be willing for an instant to leave your altars free of what you placed upon them. This is chapter 21, section 2, the responsibility for sight, paragraph 8. Be willing for an instant to leave your altars free of what you placed upon them and what is really there you cannot fail to see. The holy instant is not an instant of creation but of recognition. For recognition comes a vision and suspended judgment. Can we suspend our judgment so we can get holy vision or reality, be able to see through the eyes of Christ? Then only is it possible to look within and see what must be there, plainly in sight and wholly independent of inference and judgment. So he's saying that we have to learn to withdraw our judgments on the outer world before we'll be able to even go on the inner world and do that very same thing. Undoing is not your task, but it is up to you to welcome it or not. Faith and desire go hand in hand, for everyone believes in what he wants. You believe in what you want, so faith and desire go hand in hand. We've already said that wishful thinking is how the ego deals with what it wants. To make it so. There is no better demonstration of the power of wanting and therefore of faith to make its goals seem real and possible. Faith in the unreal leads to adjustments of reality to make it fit the goal of madness. The goal of sin induces the perception of a fearful world to justify its purpose. What you desire you will see, and if its reality is false, you will uphold it by not realizing all the adjustments you have introduced to make it so. Paragraph 10. When vision is denied, confusion of cause and effect becomes inevitable. The purpose now becomes to keep obscure the cause of the effect and make effect appear to be a cause. 
This seeming independence of effect enables it to be regarded as standing by itself and capable of serving as a cause of the events and feelings its maker thinks it causes. Earlier we spoke of your desire to create your own creator and be father and not son to him. This is the same desire. The son is the effect whose cause he would deny, and so he seems to be the cause, producing real effects. Nothing can have effects without a cause, and to confuse the two is merely to fail to understand them both. So, you know, that the authority problem where we don't re recognize that we were created in love and now we extend love and that there's a, a plan the Holy Spirit has for us. So the, the, the God being the cause, us being the effect. But when we forget that and we don't realize our interconnectedness with, with what is, with God, we think that we're the cause and we can kind of come up with whatever we want. And now we have to make adjustments to reality so that it comes in line with what we think is real. Oh my, the, oh what, uh, you know, how did Shakespeare say it? Oh what webs we tend to weave when we seek to deceive? Something like that. <laughs> uh, the sun is the effect whose cause he would deny and so he seems to be the cause, producing real effects. Nothing can have effects without a cause and to confuse the two is merely to fail to understand them both. Paragraph 11. It is as needful that you recognize you made the world you see as that you recognize that you did not create yourself. They are the same mistake. Nothing created not by your creator has any influence over you. Isn't that nice to know? Nothing created not by your creator has any influence over you. And if you think that you have made, and if you think what you have made can tell you what you see and feel, place your faith in its ability to do so, you are denying your Creator and believing that you made yourself. Again on that sentence, if you think that you have, if you think what you have made can tell you what you see and feel, and place your faith in its ability to do so, you are denying your Creator and believing you made yourself. For if you think the world you made has power to make you what it wills, you are confusing Son and Father, effect and source. 12. The Son's creations are like His Father's, yet in creating them the Son does not delude Himself that He is independent of His source or of His cause, of the Father of God. His union with it is the source of His creating. His union with His source is the source of His creating. Apart from this, He has no power to create, and what He makes is meaningless. It changes nothing in creation, depends entirely upon the madness of its Maker, and cannot serve to justify the madness. Your brother thinks he made the world with you, thus he denies creation. With you he thinks the world he made, made him. Thus he denies he made it. You now we think that the world that we see made us, and that we're affected by what's going on around us. Where actually there is something within us that's the cause of everything that's going on. <laughs> Even in illusions is that true. But we, 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 don't, we don't want to be uh, tossed here and here and here and to with, uh, with uh, beliefs that are not in the harmony with truth. That's insanity. We want to give up all of our uh, makings to the Holy Spirit to guide us and then create in the image of God. Now the last paragraph for this section, 13. Yet the truth is you, the truth is, you and your brother were both created by a loving Father who created you together and as one. Catch that? Yet the truth is you and your brother were both created by a loving Father who created you together and as one. 
See what proves otherwise and you deny your whole reality. But grant that everything that seems to stand between you and your brother, keeping you from each other and separate from your father, you made in secret, and the instant of release has come to you. All its effects are gone, because its source has been uncovered. It is its seeming independence of its source that keeps you prisoner. This is the same mistake as thinking you are independent of the source by which you were created and have never left. Let's read that last paragraph once again. Yet the truth, okay, uh, let me back up. With you, he thinks the world he made, made him. Thus he denies he made it. That was the last two sentences of, of 12, now 13. Yet the truth is, you and your brother were both created by a loving father who created you together and as one. See what, in quotes, proves otherwise, and you deny your whole reality. But grant that everything that seems to stand between you and your brother, keeping you from each other and separate from your father, you made in secret, and the instant of release has come to you. All its effects are gone, because its source has been uncovered. It is its seeming independence of its source that keeps you prisoner. This is the same mistake as thinking you are independent of the source by which you were created and have never left. Okay. Well, let's see. I think we'll stop there. I was thinking about reading a little bit more in the next section, but I think we'll just stop there. Uh, anything we want to say about our lesson today? It can be but my gratitude I earn. Give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. Wow, who, who is, who's going to help make us complete? Everybody. The ones that get under your skin have the greatest gift for you. Because they're the ones that are, are pointing out some idea that you made in secret that you can now bring to the light and let it go forever. <laughs> so give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. And from this self is no one left outside. Give thanks for all the countless channels which extend this self. All that you do is given unto him. All that you think can only be his thoughts, sharing with him the holy thoughts of God. Earn now the gratitude you have denied yourself when you forgot the function God has given you. But never think that he has ever ceased to offer thanks to you. That was the last paragraph of our, of our lesson today. Okay, just a little simple song to take with you today. It can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Can you, can you be sure to give thanks to everyone around you, knowing that they're completing you? They're part of you. They were created with you, as part of you. And you can say that to actually to everything that exists. It can be but my gratitude. I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Be sure to earn it by giving it. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Be sure to take the two five minute periods today or longer, early morning, late evening, 
and tell yourself it can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Then throughout the day, every hour of the day, tell yourself and give thanks. Ask for direction. It can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. It can be but my gratitude I earn. And I would just like to express my gratitude for you joining me today here on the banks of Lost Creek. Beautiful little place. I hear this one of the coldest spring branches in Missouri. Someone told me that. I hadn't verified it. It can be. It is chilly when you go swimming in it, though. <laughs> I stop here often when I'm going home from working in Joplin in the summer and take a dip. It can be but my gratitude I earn. And our word for peace is from a Canadian tribe, the Cree people of the Rocky Mountains and the Hudson Bay area. Uh, and it's Kemwatan, Kemwatan for peace. So thank you for the Cree people's language, Kemwatan for being for peaceful. It can be but my gratitude I earn. Thank you, Cam Watson. <laughs>